Right, mine's, mine's very easy because it's uh, you've got this in your packs, so I could probably stop now. Just, um, <laughs> probably walk away, but I won't. Um, it's a bit slightly misleading because it, it suggests there that I work for an organisation called Service Matters. I do, but Service Matters is just a brand within the Orbit Group. So I'm actually the procurement director for the Orbit Group. Um, we are on a journey towards uh, improving our um, procurement activity. We are looking to remove inefficiency. Um, I should have said probably I'm the procurement director, which might help. Um, my job is to improve procurement and the management of our suppliers. And working with our colleagues in community investment, we're looking at ways we can engage better with social enterprises and SMEs. And you have to have, in my experience, support from the executive, uh, very important, but also um, with other parts of the organisation within Orbit, we have a very effective community investment team. And what we've done, because we both want to achieve better outcomes in terms of social value, is we're working with our community investment colleagues. We've done tr joint training together. And well, there's a question earlier about being, I think it was a really important <coughs> question, which is around, is the organisation clear what it's trying to deliver when it says it wants to deliver social value? And we've got th four key priorities within Orbit. Employment and skills, um, digital inclusion, financial inclusion and well-being. Those are the four critical areas for us that we want to be able to demonstrate through social, social value. So when you come to us, something as simple as saying, um, I need a laptop, social value. You're a small organisation, you can't provide us with, one, uh, with, a, with an apprentice or you can't provide us with lots of money. We're not expecting that on every contract. But what you could do is, is pay for a laptop, uh, £200. I know that because my daughter bought one the other day. They sent me an email telling me how good the contract was. It's only 15 um, through John Lewis. So I've got her lined up to take over when I, when I retire because she's already, already on board with it. But a laptop, £200, and you can get a broadband connection for no, hardly anything. For the first 12 months, it's pretty much free. So for a small contractor who wants to engage with on social value, who can't do the big stuff, give us the cost of a laptop, we will then go and get broadband for one of our residents, and we can get them trained in the digital agenda. In, in digital in, uh, agenda. They will then get better skills, that might then help them into employment, we are looking longer term here, and ultimately, Orbit will get its rent paid, because our residents will have better <coughs> opportunities to get jobs and to therefore be able to um, um, get, get into work and pay our rent. So it, it works for everybody, it's a win-win for everybody here. And also what our community investment team can do, which is really important, is they can go to local colleges and get that person training as well. So we can turn a £200 into actually quite a lot more in terms of social value. That's a real practical, practical area. Now in terms of procurement, uh, a lot have been talked about this morning about procurement. We, I don't just deliver to, the, to Orbit, uh, I deliver, we have a consultancy that runs alive, the Service Matters Consultancy, where we deliver procurement activity to 15 other housing, housing associations in different various forms. Ty Callon is a really good example of social value where they broke a contract down into nine small contracts, right from the one-man band right up to medium and, a, and, uh, medium and a large contracts for fitting of kitchens, bathrooms and rewires a really, really positive example. Now the reason for saying that isn't because I'm touting for business, not today. Um, the, the reason for that is because I have to tender for business occasionally. There are two procurement uh, tenders that I've had to, to apply for. So when you're sat on the other side of the fence, that's how it feels uh, when you're dealing with procurement teams, I think, sometimes. Um, it's, everything seems to be there to stop you getting through the process. And I, I was at a, in Birmingham yesterday going around looking at some social enterprises where Jill was talking about, from Argonaut, was talking about turnover being a barrier. And therefore you put turnover figures up saying 400,000 minimum turnover and you can only demonstrate 150. And we have to then think about risk and say, why does turnover matter on a, on a small cleaning contract? What's the risk? So you packed in tomorrow and said, I'm down in tools, I can't deliver the contract. What is the real risk? So I think we've got to challenge ourselves in terms of what we're asking for people. So my big issue in procurement and uh, to try and sort of help and influence the sector is that the issue is around poor planning and why we don't engage properly and better on social value. We rush to the marketplace that ill-prepared, it's all last minute, we don't think through our requirements properly, our specifications are poor. Uh, suppliers fail to, fail to meet our expectations and, and that is what happens. So we rush to market, 
and we put a specification together quickly and what happens to us as in procurement is, well in, in managing the contract is we are always reactive and problem solving. There is lack of conversations between us and suppliers, it gets the relationship doesn't improve and all we then focus on is delivering the, the contract rather than the other things we've committed to do. Um, we don't have enough time to incorporate other strategies such as social value. So I think that's a, real, that's a real issue in terms of planning. That's something that procurement can do something about. It's something that organisations need to do something about, which is around 18 months. Um, I'm well known for it in orbit about saying 18 months to prepare for a proper tender, because if you don't have that time, you don't have the time to think things through up front. This is my enlightened view of procurement. There's still a bit of a fence, because there needs to be. There needs to be a few barriers. There needs to be hoops. Uh, my, my challenge to businesses here and small businesses is you've still got to meet certain standards, you've still got to comply with health and safety, you've still got to comply with some of the other policies we might need you to have. Um, but I'd like to think we've put a gate in it and make it easier for people to step through that gate because um, I think that's, that's really important. What happens when you do that and you plan ahead properly is we've got the opportunity when we go out to tender to investigate new suppliers think about different ways, investigating social value objectives. Um, we can um, design effective documentation. We can take out the, the, a lot of the PQQ questions. I was always always slightly bemused, having worked in, in NatWest for 17 years, why we used to ask for bank references on tenders. Um, I remember writing the results on the other side of it when people requested bank references for us. And they're not worth the paper they're written on, quite honestly. They are written totally to protect banks and actually they don't mean anything and in my experience they, um, they just got in the way. So we stopped asking about references, we stopped asking stupid questions like have you got five million pounds worth of insurance? Okay, on a tender, you know, it's absolutely pointless. The question should be, if you win this contract, would you be prepared to take out the right level of insurance? But it's about just changing the way we, we uh, ask these questions. And that leads me to the guidance. The guidance covers all those things that we do in procurement teams that could improve the way we actually procure. If you read this through, there are just some key areas. One is around pre-market engagement. Let's spend more time talking to suppliers. It must be very frustrating from a, from a construction point of view or from any supplier's point of view where we won't talk to you. You know, that barrier comes up and we can't talk because of the EU procurement directives. Absolute load of rubbish. The amount of times people say to me, well, you can't talk to suppliers. Of course you can. Get them in up front, do supplier open days. Get them in at 8.30 in the morning till 10 so that they can still have a proper business day. You know, make it, make it work for smaller organisations. Don't take away a whole day of working. So there are things you can do which we've covered, we'd like to think very thoroughly through here, right the way through from pre-market engagement, right the way through to contract management. And a, a little warning to suppliers is we, my feedback when I get it from my team yesterday at my team meeting was, um, suppliers are putting in what they, what they say they think we want to hear in, in the social value section and they're slightly concerned now because we're following up on it and in our contract management some of our colleagues from our community investment team are saying right you committed to this let's see it through and I think there's a little, little warning in there is that we will start doing that and as the sector improves we will start to want to know more about how you're helping deliver social value through those contracts so this guidance is for everybody the whole of the public sector um, it's got some really useful things that you can dip in and out of um, and if you want, you know, I'm going to be around all day, if you want to talk through any specific aspects then please come and speak to me. Thank you.